Welcome to your ultimate guide to customizing iOS 18. And boy, oh boy, have I got a seriously fun setup to show off today. But oh my goodness, what a huge undertaking it has been to get here. If you've been following the updates, then you'll know that iOS 18 is one of the biggest updates that Apple has pushed in quite some time. And for those of us who love customization, it's undeniably one of the biggest updates ever since they introduced widgets all the way back with iOS 14. But because of these huge changes, the developers behind the customization apps that we all know and love, they've been working relentlessly to update their apps so that they support these new changes and so that they also work with the newest iPhones. And it's been a huge, huge effort. And we're only just now at a point where creating custom home screen setups is just about as reliable as it was with iOS 17. And so as such, for today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process showing you how to recreate this brand new setup on your own iPhone. And for this new setup, as always, we've got brand new wallpapers, all of which have been designed to hide the dock on iOS 18. We've also got brand new icons, a brand new widget, and the setup automatically switches to a beautiful dark theme in the evening. I'm using the iPhone 16 Pro for this video. The process should be very similar no matter the device as long as you're running iOS 18 or later. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, let's start by talking about perhaps the most visually striking element of this home screen, the wallpaper. And it's actually become a bit of a tradition around here to create new wallpapers every time I make one of these iOS setup videos. And so keeping with tradition, we've just released our brand new pack called Retro. As the name so helpfully implies, this pack is filled with 10 retro tech inspired wallpapers and each wallpaper also has a bunch of variants to go with. You get both dark and light mode variants. You also get lock screen and home screen variants. And then a few of the wallpapers also have some additional variations to go with just to give you even more options. And as mentioned at the start of the video, every single one of the wallpapers also hides the dock on iOS 18. And folks, let me tell you right now, we have never worked so hard on a pack before. Like these are all crafted from the ground up with some of the wallpapers containing well over 100 layers. And on top of just how complex they are visually, the reason they also took longer to create than previous wallpapers we've made is that we wanted the wallpapers to line up with not only just your lock screen, which is one level of difficulty, but also your home screen, which is another level of difficulty altogether. As always, you can pick them up on my website, which I have linked below. And if you've downloaded the pack directly to your phone, then all you need to do is find wherever the zip is stored using the files app, then tap to unzip it, then open it up, and there are your wallpapers. For this setup, I'm gonna be using the Retro 5 wallpapers. So I'm gonna tap this three dot icon up here, then tap select. Then I'm gonna tap on each of the Retro 5 variants, then tap this share icon, then tap on save for images. Then we're gonna lock the phone. And from here, we're gonna long press the lock screen and then tap this plus icon to add a new wallpaper. We'll tap photos. Then I'm gonna first select my light themed lock screen variant here. Then I'll tap add. Then I'll tap on customize home screen. Then I'll tap photo and select the light themed home screen variant here. Just one thing you may need to consider depending on the phone that you're using is that sometimes iOS automatically zooms the wallpapers in if the aspect ratio doesn't line up perfectly. So you may just need to pinch to scale the wallpaper out like so to make sure. But then with that complete, we can tap on done, then done again, and there we go. Now I'm gonna tap the blue plus icon again, tap on photos, but this time I'll select the dark themed lock screen variant, then I'll tap add, then customize home screen, then tap on photo and select the dark themed home screen variant. Again, I'll just double check that the wallpaper is scaled properly by pinching it like so. And with that, I can tap on done, then done again. Now I'm gonna swipe back to my light wallpaper here, then tap on it, then I'm gonna unlock my phone. And the first thing we're gonna do here is long press our home screen, then tap on edit up here, then tap customize, and we're gonna change where it says small here to large. And just like that, you'll see that all of a sudden our app labels get hidden. And it's for this very reason that we actually designed all of our wallpapers to fit this large setting, because if you're wanting a highly customized but clean looking home screen, then you definitely wanna hide your app labels. And so I actually love that Apple did this. It's now just one less thing that we have to deal with later on. Anyhow, I'm also gonna set the icons here to this automatic mode so that when our dark theme is applied, all of our unthemed app icons in our app library, they're gonna be turned into these gorgeous dark mode versions, which I love. 
I'd actually prefer to leave them set to dark all the time, but that then tints the dock and the wallpaper, which means the rest of our setup ain't gonna look right. And yes, I have tried tapping this sun icon, which does remove the wallpaper tint, but it doesn't remove the dock tint. So unless that's a bug that will be fixed at some point in the future, the only solution right now is to leave this set to automatic, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, let's get out of that. And first of all, how nice is our hidden dock now? Just wanted to highlight that real quick, but now we're gonna long press our home screen again, then tap on edit. And this time we're gonna tap on add widget. We're gonna look for and select any option that shows up for the Widgie app. Then we're gonna scroll over and tap to add a medium sized widget. Then we wanna move that widget to a new page like so. And then while we're still in jiggle mode, we're gonna tap this page indicator icon down here. Then we're gonna uncheck any home screen that isn't the one with that new widget on it, then hit done. Now we're gonna open up the Widgie app. And for this widget, I'm using a customized version of this Hello World widget that I found on the explore page within Widgie. The original widget was actually a large widget and had a few extra elements in it. And so I took it upon myself to customize it so that it fit my home screen. And for your convenience, if you've got the Widgie app open, you can come to this create page, then tap on import, and you should just be able to scan the QR code on screen right now, and it should import. However, this didn't work properly in the last iOS setup video that I made. So I've also left the link to where you can download the Widgie backup file directly in the description below. If you're using the file method, then you can just tap this import widgie file from files option, then go ahead and locate the backup file, select it, then tap on open, and there you go. Now we can come back home, then tap this medium widget again, and now you should see the imported widget, which we wanna tap. We'll then get a prompt that asks us to capture a screenshot to enable the transparent component of the widget. So we'll come back home, then long press our home screen, then swipe over here and take a screenshot. Now for this particular wallpaper, because the dark variant only changes the color of the dock area with everything else remaining the same, then we only need this light mode screenshot. However, just keep in mind, some of the other options from the retro wallpaper pack, they have completely different colors for the light and dark theme variants. So if you're using one of those, then you'll actually need to lock your screen, long press to customize, then switch your wallpaper to your dark mode variant, then come home, long press, swipe over and then take an additional dark mode screenshot as well. Again, this particular wallpaper doesn't require that, but either way, once we've done that, we can now tap the widget here and now I can tap here where it says add wallpaper, then select that screenshot that I just captured and there we go. And again, if you are using a different wallpaper set, then you'll need to go ahead and select your dark mode screenshot using this option here. But with that done, I'll tap the tick, then I'll again tap this importer widget here, then I'll keep this top section selected as that's where our widget is gonna live, then I'll tap the tick icon, and there we go. Okay, real quick, before we get to setting up our app icons, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Pulseway. And for those who haven't heard of it, Pulseway is a leading remote monitoring and management platform used by IT professionals worldwide. And they've just introduced a game-changing new feature called Mobile Device Management, otherwise known as MDM. So with Pulseway's MDM, you can lock devices, wipe data remotely, whitelist and blacklist applications, and ensure security policies are up to date, all from one intuitive dashboard. And it is a great addition to an already powerful platform. And the best part is that you can try it completely for free, no commitments whatsoever by using the first link down in the description below. And if you're ready to upgrade, then that link will also get you a saving of up to 20% on all pricing plans for a limited amount of time. So take control of your IT systems like never before by checking out Pulseway today. All right, let's now move on to setting up our app icons. Now for a couple of my past home screen setups, I actually utilized the Widgie app itself to also create the icons, which I did mainly to unlock the ability to essentially place my icons anywhere on the home screen. And look, it is still a viable option and it does make for a much simpler process when it comes to changing your wallpapers after the fact. But I've gotten pretty tired of the whole process where when you tap an icon, it first has to launch the Widgie app before then opening the app that you're actually after. In my opinion, it just looks and feels incredibly clunky. And so that's why we spend so much time getting the wallpapers perfect so that they line up with the placement of the native home screen icons. And this means we can revert to using the old method of utilizing the transparent icons and shortcuts apps, which makes for a much more fluid experience once all is said and done. Now, as for the icons themselves, as mentioned, these are actually brand new and they come from a pack called Buttons. 
So ever since I developed the idea for the retro wallpaper pack, I pretty much immediately knew that I wanted to create an icon pack that would match the wallpapers beautifully. And well, what goes better with retro tech devices than buttons themselves? And what's actually so neat is that the pack actually comes with two completely separate icon packs, the standard button style icons, and then there's also these separate knob style icons, which create a slightly different look. And you can even mix and match the icons for some really neat end results. At launch, both individual packs come with over 1,000 icons, and a bunch of the apps have a heap of color variations to pick from as well. And as I said, you don't have to purchase either pack separately. They both come in the exact same pack, and get this, we've actually made it the cheapest icon pack that we've ever released, even though it's the most extensive. Oh, and for my Android friends, if you just so happen to be watching this video, don't worry, we've got you covered too. Both of these packs are available to purchase from the Play Store right now, and the reason they're actually separate packs on the Play Store is because if we made them just one pack, then your launcher wouldn't be able to determine which icons to use, the buttons or the knobs. So we made them both half the price of the total pack. So whichever way you go, you're not having to pay more or less. Now for everyone else using iOS, we do still have to get these icon files onto our phone somehow. So use whatever method suits you best, downloading to your computer and then airdropping them or just purchasing and then downloading them directly on your phone. But either way, once we've done that, we're gonna uncompress the zip file and there we go. From there, we wanna open up the transparent app icons app, and then we wanna to tap to add a screenshot, then select that screenshot that we captured earlier. Then we wanna enable this large icons toggle, and there we go. Now, the beauty of this particular wallpaper and this setup is that all but one of our icons are actually gonna have the exact same background, which will help to speed up the process just that little bit. So for example, let's tap here, then on customize. And from here, we wanna head back into the files app. Then I'm just gonna search for my first icon, which is gonna be Google Chrome. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of icons for Chrome here, including both the button and knob variants with a variety of color options too. But for this setup, I'm gonna select this yellow button icon like so. Then I'm gonna tap again, then tap this share icon down here, then tap copy. Now I wanna come back to the transparent app icons app, then tap this blue three dot icon here, then tap paste image, then allow paste. And by the way, if you wanna speed up this process going forward, then I suggest coming into the settings app, search for the icons app, then switch this paste from other app setting to allow. Anyway, let's come back, then tap on done. And now we just need to tap here to save the icon. Now normally to create our next icon, we'd have to close this, then tap the next space along and so on and so forth to make sure that the icons fit the wallpaper properly. But as I said, because all but one of our icons are living on this same dark colored button area, we can just stay on one of these positions here to create them all. So I'll come back into the files app and close that. Then I'm gonna search for my next icon, which is gonna be the YouTube studio icon. Then I'm gonna find the button variant, tap on it, then tap on the share icon, then tap copy. Then we'll come back, tap the blue three dot icon, then tap paste image, then done, then tap the save icon. Then you just wanna repeat that process for all of your icons. And if you're using a different wallpaper, again, just keep in mind that you may need to switch positions each time to make sure that the icons line up with your wallpaper. But for me, there's only one icon that I need to switch positions for, which is for the icon that lives on this orange button. So I'll tap on customize, then back in the files app, I'm actually gonna open the knob icon pack directly this time. Then I'm gonna open up this other folder, then tap on app drawers, and I'm gonna select this dark gray app draw icon. I'll tap on share, then copy, then I'll come back, paste that in like so, and then save that as well. And I'll explain what I'm gonna use that one for in a moment. But then from there, we need to open up the shortcuts app and go through the process of creating shortcuts for each of the apps that we wanna open and then adding them to our home screen with our custom icons. And if you've done this in the past, then all of your saved shortcuts should show up here automatically and it will make this next part of the process much quicker. But if this is your first time doing this, then as a quick guide, I'll first tap this plus icon here, then I'm gonna select this open app action here, then tap where it says app and find the first app I wanna create a shortcut for, which for me will be the Google Chrome app. Then I'll tap this arrow here, then tap add to home screen, then I'll tap this custom image option here, then tap on choose photo, then select my exported Chrome icon. I'll tap choose, then add, and there we go. Our first icon has been added to our home screen and I can now long press to reposition it like so. 
You then just need to repeat that process with all of your app shortcuts. And thanks to Apple removing app labels when our icon size is set to large, we don't have to worry about manually removing this shortcut label every time, which is great. It's just one other step that we can now skip. But once complete, you should have all of your app icons on your screen like this. And again, we can now long press to reposition these how we like. And like I said, that's the beauty of this wallpaper specifically is that all of our app icons can be repositioned as we like, thanks to the fact that they all have that same dark colored background. Now, disclaimer, if you're using a different wallpaper for your dark theme that doesn't have matching colors to the light screen variant, then you will actually need to create an entirely separate home screen with a duplicated version of the same medium sized widget at the top, but also with completely new versions of your transparent icons that you'll again have to create from scratch using the transparent icons app so that they match your dark theme wallpaper. And if you're confused as to what I'm talking about, then just check out the video linked in the cards as that actually walks you through the process in detail. Now, as for that icon on the orange button, well, that's actually where I'm gonna place a shortcut that changes the theme of my setup from light to dark and vice versa. But before we get to that, we've actually got to set up the dark mode automation first. Before we do that though, I'm just gonna quickly lock the phone again, then long press, then switch over to my dark mode wallpaper, then tap to set it, and then I'm gonna unlock my phone. And as you can see, we still need to long press our home screen, then tap on edit, then customize and change this setting here to large so that our icons line up and then this setting to automatic so that the app library icons get converted to dark theme versions when the dark theme is applied. Then I'm just gonna get out of that, then lock my phone again, then long press and switch back to my light themed wallpaper. And now we're gonna go ahead and create the dark mode automation. Now again, this process is very, very similar to how we've done it in previous versions of iOS, but for anyone new here, to set this up, we need to first come into our settings app, then come down a bit to this section and tap on focus. Then from here, we wanna tap this plus icon, then tap custom, then give your focus mode a name, which for me, I'm just gonna keep it simple and name mine dark, then change the color and icon if you like. Then with that done, we'll tap on next. Then we'll tap customize focus and we're gonna leave these top settings as is. And all we're gonna do is tap here to choose a custom lock screen that's linked to this focus mode. And we just need to select that dark lock screen variant that we created earlier. Then we'll tap done and there we go. Now, if as we discussed before, you're using a different wallpaper that requires you to create a separate version of your home screen with dark icons and so forth, then you'll actually wanna tap this home screen option here as well and choose that home screen. But apart from that, all I wanna do now is come down here and tap to add a schedule and I'm gonna make mine time-based and set it to turn on at 9 p.m., then off at 7 a.m., then I'll tap done, then come down here and tap on add filter and I'm just gonna select this dark mode option here, then tap on add. Now, as far as making our setup switch themes and wallpapers automatically according to our schedule, that's pretty much all you need to do. But like I said, I also wanna be able to have a shortcut on my home screen that manually enables or disables the dark mode as well. So I've actually created a custom shortcut for this, which I've left linked in the description. And you just need to download that, then locate it in your files app, tap the shortcut file, then tap on add shortcut. And the only thing that you may need to tweak here is where it says dark here and then here. Just make sure this is actually set to your dark focus mode that you just created, which may or may not have a different name depending on how you set things up. And I've actually found that you do actually need to manually change this one here to do not disturb, then back to your dark focus mode. Otherwise the shortcut won't work properly. But from there, we'll tap the arrow here, then tap add to home screen, then tap here, then choose photo. And finally, we'll select that knob icon with the orange background, then tap choose, then add. Then all we need to do is reposition it like so. And now if I tap that newly created shortcut, the dark focus mode becomes activated, which changes our wallpaper and theme automatically. And then if I tap it again, the wallpaper switches back to the light mode variant and the dark theme gets disabled. And with that, our brand new home screen setup is officially complete. 
there you have it. That is your guide to creating an incredible looking home screen setup on iOS 18. And obviously you don't need to recreate my setup exactly, but hopefully this video has given you the tools and inspiration needed to go forth and make your own really neat home screen setups. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to hit you up with a response. And just a reminder that links to everything mentioned throughout the video can be found down in the description below as well. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.